What do I think about Dragon Ball Super? Boring. What are you moving for? It's, uh... Four retreads into one unique concept. Into, uh... Another retread. And what I mean by that is, like, at the end of Z, when they were talking about giving us something new, um, they spoke about, well, not even spoke about, they gave us, uh, two movies. They gave us, uh, Battle of the Gods, which introduced, uh, Super Saiyan God, and then they gave us, um, hello there, they gave us, uh, what the hell is it called? Uh, Resurrection of Frieza. Resurrection of F. Now, both of those movies are, are stellar. They don't draw out the story in any way, shape, or form. They get, like, super quick and super fast to the point where it's like, you know, hey, Frieza's back. Frieza's a villain. Um, Goku and Vegeta have to, like, you know, go up against Frieza when he has, um, when he's achieved his golden form and defeat his golden form. In order to... Is that my target up there? Can I just shoot you? Whoa, 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 whoa. Check out the base. But then you have to defeat his, the Golden Form and see how Super Saiyan Blue stacks up against Golden Freezer, right? Then, of course, Battle of the Gods is introducing Beerus and achieving Super Saiyan God before we end up getting the Blue Form, like, later on in the follow-up movie. When Super came out, Super came out with the premise that, hey, we're going to give you, like, we're going to tell you, like, a new story. Instead, what it did was it took both movies and chopped both of those movies up into like two arcs while adding filler in between that that really wasn't needed that kind of drew it out. So for people that had not watched the movies, you were getting that content explaining like, you know, where Super Saiyan Blue basically came from and all that other type of shit. But for like Dragon Ball Z fans, super fans, which is like, you know, 90% of Dragon Ball Z fans, um, it was just retreading a story that you already told. Uh, but then also, on a level, it was also retreading villains that you'd already given us. Where it's like, oh, hey, you know, here's the major villain. It's Frieza again. It's like, well, we've been here before. Uh, multiple times, actually. Like, nobody gives a shit about Frieza anymore. Give us something new. But then... When all that was said and done, it jumped into a super interesting arc, which was the Tournament of Power. Tournament of Power is fantastic. It's the it's the the best arc that um, Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Super did, because for the most part, it was constantly giving you something new. Uh, the idea of um, Saiyans that grew up on a planet that didn't end up becoming you know corrupted they were galactic peacekeepers the universe six saiyans the idea that namekians from a different reality would be noble uh the same way that piccolo was where it's a part of their culture to hybridize and fuse with another in order to achieve new tiers of power something that you would hope that uh would relate to piccolo in some way shape or form for him being able to catch up to Goku and Vegeta the way he wants to do in the mainline universe. Introducing the Pride Troopers and all the other villains. Introducing Jiren. Like, all of that is super cool. And it, in my opinion, it is the best part of Super. Then you get the Brawly movie. The Brawly movie is fucking great. Uh, introduces Brawly, makes him a more um, deeper and emotional character. Where you realize that, like, you know, progress really ain't shit. That he's basically been um, abusing and using that boy. And you would hope that once you introduce Brawly, you would springboard off of that. And have him basically be a part of the mainline universe. Interacting with the other Saiyans and things along those lines. Training with Goku and Vegeta on Beerus' planet. Um, going down the route that Vegeta's going down where... His powers and skill set are more uh, God of Destruction based than anything else. Instead, no. Brawly shows up in a movie, and then for the most part, he's like never, or if not ever, rarely mentioned again. When you were hoping that Brawly would probably pop up during the Tournament of Power, and then he'd have like this great showdown with Kale, and then something would happen that would force the Kiros to kind of knock them both off 
teleport them back up so that they can clean the hell off. That doesn't happen. All right, fine, whatever. Then you get into like the next phase and it's like, okay, so we're going to do the next villain after Brawly. And you're like, all right, dope. Who's the villain going to be? I completely messed this up, didn't I? Yes, I did. You're like, all right, dope. So who's the villain going to be? And it's like, oh, we're going to go with a uh, Cell. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Like, if you don't know from the comics, the next villain that they introduce is called um, Moro. And he's basically uh, this guy who, if he touches you in any way, shape, or form, he could... Well, no. Technically... He can consume your essence and then gain your abilities, which is something that he does later on. And if he touches you, he can gain your abilities. And it's like, okay, but this is basically a cell arc all over again when there are better concepts that you can chase down. For instance, one of the things that's brought up during a tournament of power is that there were way more universes than uh, currently exists and that Zeno destroyed them. A dope concept would have been like, hey, and I know that a uh, 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 super fan for Dragon Ball Z basically did this already in the form of, um, I forgot what the name of that manga is called. It's like Hakuden, uh, Hakuden, something, where he basically tells the story of um, when we wished back all the universes, we got back all the other ones. That's a dope concept. Because then you start getting into like a war between between the the gods of destructions from those universes and the angels from our universe, and that the angels rebelled because their universes were destroyed and yada yada yada. Way cooler concepts than just like, oh hey, it's another cell type villain. And it's like Alright, fine. But then you get into the arc after that, and it's like, oh hey, the next villain is a Majin Buu type villain. It's like can we do something interesting please can 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 we can we do something new i don't know how i messed that up can we do something new something that like you know is gonna get me super hyped for for dragon ball super instead of just rehashing the same shit that we've basically rehashed for for the long for the longest time for the longest time stay down but you know hey i'm not toriyama Toriyama has creative control over it, but Super really doesn't do anything anything that I can say um, gets me hype. Like, don't get me wrong, seeing Goku transform and, like, wreck, just throw hands with people, that's always great. Robot in here? Let's robot in there. Um, but for the most part, what is Goku really doing? Once again, like, you give us a Gohan movie, and the Gohan movie doesn't move the needle forward for his character in any way shape or form why because you instantaneously say that the movie is not canon it's just a spin-off movie and it's like all right fine whatever I haven't used piccolo in forever uh once again goku always gets the power up so we're not using vegeta in any way that's interesting in any way shape or form and it's like all right man like we have multiple characters here if my hero academia can give all of its characters arcs where they all feel useful and they feel as though all of them are growing. I feel as though Dragon Ball Z can do the exact same thing, but Super doesn't want to do that. Super wants to play it safe. Um, and because it's playing it safe, it's, in my opinion, a poorer product. One of the great things about Z is that there were standout moments that you can think of um, that don't suspend disbelief. Like, for instance, TN basically killing himself to hold Cell down for a few seconds while everybody runs away that's fucking great that that's fantastic friggin writing right there um uh piccolo getting that power up so that he can beat the androids and then instantaneously running into cell who's his equal and then cell getting that power up and becoming an even more dangerous threat that's great that moves the needle forward that makes it so that piccolo can deal with the immediate threat but then at the exact same time you still need um Goku, Vegeta, and all the Saiyans to basically get out of their training in order to take on the, the the real threat. You don't get that in Super. Super, you're just basically waiting for Goku to hit his next power level. And then, you know, his power level completely invalidates all of the other fucking characters in the show. Because it's like, well, we're waiting for Goku to get his next form. And it's like, ah, oh, okay. Well, you know. You know, it's uh, that I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't aim my man. Like, what, 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 what are these bullets, my boy? You know, it's, it's not like, you know, I would want... 
um, Gohan or anybody to like get their shine. You know, I'm just, I'm just a, just a humble, I'm just a humble anime viewer. But you know, hey, that's just me. If if you like Super, it's nothing against you. Um, like I said, Super has like some really solid storytelling when it chooses to give you solid storytelling, like the um, like the not the Battle of the Gods, but the the, the Tournament of Power. Tournament of Power is great. But other than that, it's not doing anything else that I would say is uh, super interesting. That's that.